Look at this. Simone Biles. This is a Cheng. Oh. And this. Those are just some of the many stellar performances of the most decorated gymnast herself. Seeing those moves, it is no wonder that... So, mm -hmm. do you have a favorite yeah. move, and, and can you still do all five of the moves? That's funny. I can actually still do four out of the five. Having a move named after a gymnast is something huge in the gymnastic space, as you most probably know already. According to Simone Biles... Even if I decide to retire or whatever that is, those skills will always be in that book. So This is perhaps one of the biggest motivating factors for gymnasts to train hard and perfect a certain move. In light of this, some moves have become so dangerous that they were banned from the competition. In high-level competitions for sports such as gymnastics or figure skating, audiences are, without question, often captivated by the daring moves the athletes perform. In many sports like gymnastics, athletes are often judged in difficulty and execution categories. This means that athletes who do not perfectly execute a hard move can receive the same score as another athlete who does a medium-level skill flawlessly. As competitions become more and more competitive, difficult moves appear more frequent. This means that athletes are at a higher risk of injury, which is why certain moves are banned. In light of this, some question the fairness of banning moves just because only a few athletes can perform them. So, does banning moves make sports safer, or does it make it unfair for the athletes who can and want to perform those moves? If so, does it hinder their artistry? As most of you know, gymnastics has evolved over the years, with athletes constantly pushing the boundaries of what is physically possible. However, the quest for innovation sometimes comes at a price, as certain skills prove to be too risky and potentially life-threatening. To address this and to ensure the safety and well-being of gymnasts, governing bodies and organizations have implemented bans on specific skills that pose an excessive danger. The prohibition of dangerous skills in gymnastics is a crucial aspect of the sport's safety regulations. Since some skills are considered very risky, they are banned from competitions entirely to protect athletes from serious injury or even death. Governing bodies such as the International Gymnastics Federation, FIG, and USA Gymnastics can place such prohibitions. A prohibited skill in gymnastics refers to a maneuver that is banned from being performed in competitions due to the high risk it poses to the gymnast's safety. These skills typically have a higher probability of causing severe injury, especially if attempted without the proper level of training and experience. Note that certain skills are banned in gymnastics for a range of reasons, primarily centering on the safety of the gymnast. The main reasons why certain skills might be banned or maybe either one of or all of the following. Risk of injury, historical precedent, technique considerations, developmental considerations, and or difficulty in judging. Simply put, if a skill has a history of causing severe injuries or accidents, or the techniques used are considered unsafe or undesirable, the said move may be banned. Some skills may also be banned because they are difficult for judges to evaluate consistently and fairly. Additionally, gymnastics governing bodies ban certain skills for certain age groups or skill levels to ensure that gymnasts are not attempting moves they are not physically or mentally ready for. Overall, the banning of certain skills in gymnastics is an important tool to manage the inherent risks of the sport and ensure athlete safety. And so, through the years, decades even, numerous moves have been banned from the sport. One incredibly dangerous gymnastics routine was so risky that it was only performed once before getting banned for the last 50 years. The move is known as the dead loop, later named Corbett Flip after Soviet gymnast Olga Corbett. The move involves an athlete standing on the higher bar, doing a backflip, and then grabbing onto the bar again. Failure would mean falling a significant height or smacking into the bar. This stunt could involve multiple injuries, especially in the head, neck, and spine regions. While there was a good amount of reward associated with this trick, the risks outpowered the wins. Performed at the Olympic Games in Munich, Germany for the first and only time in 1972 by Corbett, it has since been banned for the last 50 years. 
Ironically, the amazing and dangerously risky routine didn't even win her the gold medal as she was pipped to first place by East Germany's Karen Jantz. Another is the Mukina flip, which was named after Soviet gymnast Elena Mukina. This is a very dangerous move and is now banned because of a tragic accident. This occurred just prior to the 1980 Moscow Olympics during a practice routine. Speaking of Mukina, another dangerous move caused the gymnast to become quadriplegic. It was the Thomas Salto. For context, any skill to which a gymnast adds a half salto and rolls out of rather than completing a full flip to their feet is considered a rollout skill. An example of a rollout skill is the Thomas Salto, named after American Olympic gymnast Kurt Thomas. The Thomas Salto is a back salto with one and a half flips and one and a half twists that the gymnast rolls out of at the end before standing up. Although the rollout skills have been banned in women's gymnastics for a while because of how precise the landing must be in order to avoid neck injury, they were banned in men's gymnastics only in the 2017 to 2020 code of points because of the same safety concerns. This difficult landing has caused injuries for multiple gymnasts, most notably Elena Mukina, as earlier mentioned, who broke her neck and became quadriplegic because of the Thomas Salto. Many male and female gymnasts competed in rollout skills before the bands, such as when the Thomas Salto was showcased by Hei Jume at the 1992 Olympics. The fourth trick to get banned is the Protonova Vault, which is also referred to as the Vault of Death, named after the Russian gymnast Yelena Protonova, who was also known as Elena. It is also one of the most dangerous and life-threatening tricks to practice in the gymnastics community, since the high level of complexity and the potential risks involved in it have led to the rare practice of this trick. This one is not completely banned. Another example is another trick called Gaylord 2, which was named after an American gymnast, Mitch Gaylord. It is a release move on the high bar, and this involves the chance of a severe fall. This trick is not completely banned, but its usage is highly frowned upon because of its extreme risk factor. Simply put, these moves have been banned to ensure the safety of the gymnasts. However, over the years, athletes and coaches have found a way around the ban to perform these moves in contests. This often leads to a negative marking or zero score in case the judges are able to draw the parallels. Yes, that's right. After all, breaking a rule always comes with a price when caught. So, if someone chooses to break a rule in the gymnastics competition by carrying out a banned routine, they'll have to face the consequences. These consequences can be as simple as a negative mark and as dire as disqualification. However, there are no legal repercussions involved and the performing athlete won't end up in jail. It is worth noting, however, that some of the banned moves can still be practiced by the gymnasts and trained under professional supervision and under all the safety measures. Mind you, these tricks are absolutely prohibited in championships or any kind of competition. Will we see another move banned ahead of the Paris Olympics? Better yet, which athletes will we see there? Watch this to see who exhibits great potential so far in the season.